When you have Chris Krauskopf build you a rocking chair, you get a custom fit rocker that's been designed and built to fit your body. Beautifully designed and made to fit, let's visit his workshop. My father enjoyed building wooden boats when he was younger. And back in the late 60s, I remember we had a Rose Bantam uh, sailboat. He loved to make sailboats. He's from the Navy, in the Navy and stuff. So we had a rosewood, what's called gunnels, they're the, the parts around the top of the boat, and made out of rosewood. And I remember sanding that and using a surform tool to help shape it and stuff, just when I was a little kid. And I got to see that as I was growing up and how he put boats together. And I built my first rocking chair from a kit for my mother, and that was in 1979. So it's been a long time ago, and the way it went together, it just it just fascinated. She still has that rocker to this day at their house. Yeah, uh, it's not that comfortable or anything, but I had a fascination with them at that point. It came back to me. Um, later on, and then uh, in 2001, I developed the prototype for the one I have here. It took uh, until about 2009 before I started really building the prototypes. And each time I'd build a prototype of a rocking chair, I'd take it to my woodworking, because we have about 100 of us here in town. I said, tell me what you think, and they weren't shy. They told me what they thought about it. <laughs> I said, no, no, this is, seat's too short, the arms are too high, they're too this or that, and everything. So uh, what I did is I took that information and, and slowly started to rebuild the piece. And then I brought in prototype number two and I'd get different responses to it and stuff. Finally, after six of them, I brought in that sixth chair and sat it down and everybody who sat in it smiled. So I knew I had, I knew I had the right, I was on the right track at that point. grandfather on my mother's side always dabbled in wood stuff. He, he never thought he was very good, but he was. And unfortunately, he would use pallet wood or weak wood. And so his beautiful pieces would dry up and twist and things like that. But uh, it was a, an interesting, when he passed away, his, uh, he had made toy cars and other things for all the grandkids. And I'm from a large family. There were 25, 26 grandkids that he made this stuff for. Yeah. He made it for everybody but me. And then uh, I remember when he was, uh, just before he died, I, uh, I realized he hadn't done that. And he said, oh, well, I, you get all the stuff that I used to make it. And I thought, well, that was, a, that was kind of a neat thing. So uh, he knew that I had the skills to make the, the things and stuff like that. So it was, it was quite a gift. And I have a lot of his tools hanging up behind me over there too. So. I found with a rocking chair is if you want the most comfortable rocking chair, it has to be built to fit you. So I take certain measurements of, of folks. It's a pretty simple measurements and things so that I can uh, build one that fits them. And when you sit in the chair, it, it feels very good to uh, virtually all the people, but the person it's made for it fits perfectly and they really like it. So I measure, for instance, the length from the elbow to the base of the fingers for the length of the arm. That's a very important one because uh, I found you don't want your arms so short that your hand's hanging down or, or too long where you can't grab over. Because it, it's a very nice feeling to be able to wrap your hands right around the end and, and feel that there. Uh, that's one measurement. Another and an important one is from the elbow to the seat. So when you're relaxed, your shoulders can relax all the way down. Sometimes arms are put into the back so high that you're up like this. And uh, I also measure from the, from the back side to the underside of the knee for the length of the seat. And then from the underside of the knee to the floor for the height. And uh, another one is from, from the seated position to the top of the head for the, for the top. So you can lay your head back. It's a very nice, relaxed kind of position. 
Kentucky Crafted last year was the first time I brought the chairs. And people would come and see the booth and they'd look at the chairs and, oh, and then they'd want to come and they'd sit in them and they'd feel them. Oh, and they can't believe it's wood. That's what is amazing to a lot of people. Because uh, I made the design to match our body. So when you sit in it, it doesn't, you don't have any sharp points or anything poking you. First and foremost uh, was fit. It had to fit perfectly. I really wanted them to fit well. Second, I wanted it to look very beautiful as I wanted it to be the prettiest chair in the house. So uh, when you sit in it, it's the most comfortable and when you're out, you can look at it from all angles and it has a real very attractive look to it. So that, they were both, they were both very important, but fit had to be there first because I knew that I could make a pretty chair and have it uh, look very uh, avant-garde or whatever. And if people didn't like sitting in it, it would just sit in a corner. And uh, I'm too practical. I'm German. I'm practical. You know, I to, things have a certain function. They need to fit that function. So he can build anything, but he can't build that. <laughs> and I just, I love that. I thought that was a, that was just the greatest compliment. There. <laughs>